Um, if you don't watch the video version of If We Ran Nintendo, um, I, I strongly urge you to just do it this week if you can, um, please. I'll also put up this the intro by itself. Um, but we, we had Gary Gray, re, friend of the show, um, reached out to us a while ago. It was like, hey, I'd like to animate the beginning of the show for you guys. And we had this intro that Sean Masson from Nintendo Dads did for us. Um, and, you know, I used, like, clips. Like, I just took a bunch of, like, pictures and clipped it together, like, what in my mind I thought would be appropriate for what he was talking about. Uh, Gary took it to another level. Gary came in and animated the whole thing. So... From here on out, I'm going to use that animation because I just think it's phenomenal. Um, he did a great job, knocked out Brooke. Thank you so much, Gary, because God knows you didn't have to do it, and you did it, and, it, dude, it's just amazing. Um, so enough talk. I'm going to jump right into the show. And, you know, again, if you haven't watched it, please go to the YouTube channel and check it out and leave a comment for Gary and tell him how great it is because – really is a great intro. Um, so, here we go. Let's face it. As Nintendo fans, we are often left slightly disappointed and scratching our heads asking why. Where is our Super Mario Galaxy 3? Why isn't Metroid out yet? Bring back the Ice Climber seriously, and what were you thinking of the Virtual Boy? Well, Sit back as Sean Capri and Bobby Pauls do just that. That's right, this is If We Ran Nintendo. Now, cue the music, maestro. What is up, everybody, and welcome to episode 16 of If We Ran Nintendo. I am Bobby, the Nintendo guru, joined by my bestest buddy in the world, Sean Capri. What is up, Sean? I'm so happy to be here with Bobby. We're it's nor not normally a, a Sunday day where we where we get together and run Nintendo, but we're we're adjusting our schedules. We're both gonna maybe see some Batman Killing Joke yes. this week. Yes. Uh, I'm excited to run the company that we don't have any business running. With yes, you today. absolutely. We shouldn't even be running a lemonade stand, and <laughs> but you know. But we decided we're going to run Nintendo. So, um, so what's how, how are you, how was your day today? It looks like you you know you you're actually working on your room. I like it. I like it. I am. I'm working my way up. I have been uh, I've been finishing up my basement. I've got the two TVs going on in the basement. That's kind of mm -hmm. like our gaming space. And I've been working up as we go uh, in our house here. And so I'm currently in the room that I podcast from. So behind me, for watching video. I, I'm just painting the god awful yellow that has been behind me for the last for way too long. Yeah, um, it's a nice, nice little gray kind of color. Uh, and this entire shelf is going to be like a GameStop shelving. Sorry, the, the entire wall is going to be like a GameStop shelf. And nice. uh, we're going to have Funko Pops. We're going to have some Skylanders, maybe some Amiibo, Disney Infinity, just a whole bunch of Transformer toys. Nice. I cannot wait. And I almost the thing. So it was a hot day today. And I was doing all of this without my shirt on. Just, <laughs> just relax. Just, Jeez. but I wanted to eat. <laughs> <laughs> so I had like the nice like farmer tan and everything. Uh, but I wanted so badly, and I, I was just too lazy to go grab a t-shirt. I wanted so bad to grab my phone and start doing a Bobby Paul style. I'm building my game room. Uh, and I wanted to like put the put my phone down. Like I, I didn't have anything to like set it on either. I'm like, okay, let me move it over here for a little bit. Oh, you here, that's where this is gonna go. I oh, it's too late now because the work has already started. But I can't Listen, wait to show everybody. I, out. Don't so. mock me. I love my game room. I'm enjoying building it. I figured, you know, because you know what the thing of it is is it's an imitation of the finest form of flattery. Is that the yes. imitation? Is that yeah, yes. something like that. Yeah. So it's a compliment. No, I know, but but the thing of it is, is, like I've been doing my videos every week. And I'll have one up this week because I've done quite a bit more. I showed you pictures a few minutes ago. And I just, I'm enjoying it. I'm loving it. And now people are like, as I'm posting random things on Instagram and stuff, people are like, can we get a game room tour? And I'm like, I'm doing it every week. Go check out the YouTube channel. So like I'm, I'm consistently doing it. And then I will do a grand tour when like a, a basically soup to nuts showing everything off 
um, a one time through after I get everything done, which um, should be next weekend. Next weekend, I should have it all done. I have two TVs. I'm not 100% happy about the size of the second TV, but it's all I have at the moment. I'm not probably the size that matters. Uh, yeah, well, depends what you ask. But it's uh, <laughs> it's, once you get married, it doesn't matter. That's yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> the TV, I mean, like cause nah, you, you know, you're just, just, no, 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 I'm thinking about something that happened. I can't. I, know, I, can't I know, even, know where you're. No, going. no, I can't even repeat the story because it's 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 kind of vulgar. It's something that happened with me and my dad um, when we when I put the big TV. And I'll tell you after the show. I can't really. I. My mind is going a million miles an it's, hour. It's funny. It's funny. So anyway, so I got two TVs, but I'm not going to get them replaced until probably October, November sometime. So I really can't, you know, do a, a room tour with that. I'll just do a tour or like a update, uh, you know, at that point. But Wednesday, I get my vinyls from What is Blick. Cannot wait to put them up. That is going to really set this room off, I feel. So it's it's been a, a great work in progress. I can't wait to continue. It's coming together beautifully. It looks I, so great. I mean, I got to look at one of the one of our older shows because it's like your backdrop, even just behind you, looks incredible. Yeah, that. Do you miss the Zelda room at all? Do you miss it? Um, a little, but I will have uh, kind of like a Zelda thing going on the side over here. Yeah. So I, I'm bringing it back. Like it, it, it'll be back. It just won't be in the podcast form. Mm. Um, but I love this. I love the blue. Tony said it today. Like I was showing her on the geek cast that we did yesterday and I was showing her the video of it and she was like, Oh my God, that blue looks so good behind you. And stuff. Mm -hmm. like, it brings out your eyes. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. But I like, but I like, I think the black shelves also, help set it off as well mm -hmm. so i'm really i'm really loving it so enough about me um shout outs let's do a couple shout outs so Sweet segue yes the first one i got to give shout outs to two people that was with us yesterday so toby you can follow him at toby's underscore take and then mark carabin you can follow him at, at mark carabin um, you can also follow his podcast, The Warp Whistle, at the underscore Warp Whistle. Um, we did the Geek Cast with him yesterday. Obviously, you know, me and Toby do it every Saturday, but we had you and Mark on with us. My it has to be my favorite episode ever now. Like, that was so much fun. Listening back to it, we <laughs> were breaking stones back and forth. Just so much fun. It's such a blast. And I really, really enjoyed it. The time that we had, I, I I don't know how Mark and Toby feel. I know how you feel. We you know we talked a few minutes before, but I it's it's hands down one of my favorite episodes. And I know how Toby gets sometimes when I bring guests on. Um, he gets a little eh, sometimes because he's not sure how he's going to get along with the people. But at least with this one, like he's had a couple episodes with Mark, he's had a couple episodes with you, mm -hmm. so I think he knew what he was getting himself into with this one. But it was even him. He was on his game, man. He Toby's was just the like, best, man. He brings he, well, and he brought a new game too that we got to yes. play, and it was yes. just so much fun. He just he he hit it out of the park. Yeah. Even though I don't, I'm not sure if it, do do people from England play baseball? I, I'm not sure to hit it out of the park. <laughs> no, I think they played cricket. No, they didn't they? Oh, probably cricket. Yeah, but mm -hmm. if they did play baseball, they probably call it like bat ball or something. Yeah, it's something stupid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Football. Because you hit it with your bat. Yeah, I, I don't know what yeah. accent that was. Those know, were... um, one more shout out I wanted to give to Bennett Billard, and you're part of the Geek Guru Nintendo Guru Facebook group as well. Mm -hmm. But yesterday he went on a tear, dropping articles and you know trailers and everything for Comic Con. Like he was like a reporter. Oh going yeah, there. and dude, that to me was just awesome because mm -hmm. I was tied up doing the geek guru and then I had stuff to do with the room and all that stuff. And I really didn't get a chance to consume all that. Like I typically would have. And I just went on and I was just going through everything. I was like, it's all right here. He, he put everything there. It's like, uh, my God, dude, that is just awesome. When you have people that just, you know, are nice enough to go like, Hey, I want to share this with everybody. But mm -hmm. he didn't just share one thing. He shared about 10 things like through the course of the day. And then today he started to do more and all that. And like, 
Bennett, if you're listening, man, thank you so much. You know, I sincerely appreciate how, because I, I know it's not easy to do that and all that. I mean, I'm, you're just dropping a link, I know that, but you're going and you're looking stuff up and all that, and you're dropping it. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, I want to. I want to jump in and just say, like, yeah. as somebody who's been to San Diego Comic Con, that I got more information from the group, just like yeah. from having these links dropped in there, than I that I've got being at Comic Con. Like, it yeah. is difficult to sort of sort through all the different stuff that's happening. There's just so much, and like, you just knew exactly what everybody would care about, and it was yeah. right there. Like, that's kind of like I didn't even go to IGN. I was just in this Facebook group. Just yeah, like, spot on, people, like, man. It was perfect. So yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, that was great. So that's it. That's all we got for right now. That is all. That is all. Um, let's let's start running this thing, shall we? All right, let's and, do it. Uh, first one comes from Gary Gray. What's up, Gary? Good guy. Um, he said, "How would you deal with remakes, and which games would you remake?" So I I came up with three. Mm-hmm. Um, two of them. I made, I put on there because it's something that I would want. The third one I put on there because in terms of Nintendo, I think this is what they need to do. So what did, do you have any, I'm sure you have games. How many did you do? I also have three. Okay. Okay. Um, and they sort of vary in what, what we would do with them. And so maybe that's part of like how we kick the discussion off here is uh, like, <clears throat> how are we defining a remake? Are we like, is it the final fantasy seven thing that we're getting with the remake? Or are we doing more of like the Majora's mask on 3ds kind of thing? Like the yeah. star Fox 3d. So, Cause I think mm-hmm. there's, I think there's definitely opportunity for both. Mm-hmm. There's obviously precedent for the latter. So I'm curious as like where, where you're taking this. I have a couple, I have two of them. Um, well, Actually, well, we can discuss it as we go. I have two that, that really could be remade completely. Like blown. Mm-hmm. What the first one has to be blown up and totally remade. The other two can be refreshed. So, with okay. that in mind, why don't we start yeah. with with what you've got first here? All right. So my first game on the list is Super Mario Brothers Two. Oh uh, yes. This is my all time favorite Mario game. Um, I think it is the best game in the series. It did something totally different. You know, it, it a lot of just the crazy thing. A lot of the mechanics and things that are in that game carried on forever, but we never saw like a true sequel to that game or anything from that. Like, you know, like the strength of Toad when you use him and how quick he is, and like the flutter jump from Luigi and Peach's float jump. Like that's all stuff that came from that game. Mm-hmm. The shy guys came from that game. Like, there's a lot of different things that started the bombs and all that. Like there's a lot of stuff that started. In That's the, crazy. Yeah. And, and never like they never got a true sequel, but yet you still get like little, little bits and pieces breaking out of that game. So for me, if I was to redo it, um, I think you refresh it, but I think you go with a different art style because essentially that game is a dream. It's Mario's dream. So, and, and spoilers, you know, if you haven't beat the game, when you actually do beat the game, Mario is sleeping in a bed. So he's dreaming this whole thing. This whole world is a dream. So how no mad one, would people be now if you got a game and you reach the end and whoever it is, whether it's Mario or somebody else, and you realize the entire thing is fake, it's a dream. Well, people be pissed now. Yeah, Miyamoto always did that. You know what I mean? Like that's a dream in three is a play. You know, mm-hmm. like it, it, so he's always consistently done that little quirky stuff. But being that it's a dream, I think the art style that you go for is I would try to mess with like a watercolor type thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just refresh the graphics, uh, maybe bring in like an orchestra to do the music and just go with it. You know what I mean? Like, I think that that would be the best way to do it. Like, throw it on the NX. And just be like, hey, here's here's Super Mario Bros. 2 Remastered. We know you didn't ask for it, but here you go. Um, and I probably would throw it out there for about 40 bucks, something like that, like in that price range. Um, but depending upon what they did with it, you know, 40 to 60, depending on what they did. Like if they did what I'm saying, orchestra music, watercolor theme, they're going to have to go to $60 because they're going to have to redo everything. Mm -hmm. If they just refresh the graphics and made them better, you know, like, you know, 
revamped them and all that, you could probably get away with 40 bucks and just drop it on the eShop. Um, but I would like to see them do the full nine, man, like put it in a box, put it similar to a, 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 a Nintendo box, original Nintendo box, even if they're on this bit. We don't know what NX is going to be at that point. We don't know if it's going to be disc-based or, or cartridge-based or whatever, but I would just do full fan service with it. Like the, the physical copy would have, be in an NES box, um, and if it's a disc, you just slide out, you pull the disc out, and boom. If it's a, a cartridge, you just slide out, and then the cartridge obviously would be smaller. But I would just do total fan service. I would probably even go as far as to, if it was a disc or a cartridge, like a smaller cartridge, I would have it where you even have it packed in a cartridge. You take it out, and you open <laughs> yeah. up the old NES, and mm-hmm. there's the cartridge inside. And you either use that cartridge or use a disc. Like, I would just do full t- fan service with that and, like, really take it back. So that's how I would handle that game. That sounds awesome. I would even, you know, because we can just do whatever we want at this point, and just do um, Mario All Stars. Give the same treatment yeah. to all three of them. I, I look, thought about that, but, but for me, but this is just for me, and this It'd is be like Mario All Stars Two, like well, we talked if, about. Well, All Stars Two, you know, that's a totally different ball game. <laughs> but for me, with this, I took my favorite. This is my. This sure, is one sure, of the sure. ones that is my personal. This is one I know will never happen because they yeah. act like they act like Mario Two never happened before. Um, so for me, this is just a dream for me. I know it would never happen at mm-hmm. all. And if and if I ran Nintendo, I wouldn't even do this one. So <laughs> and I wouldn't do this one because it's not a money maker. I know it's not going to make one. You know what I mean? Like it's not one of those. Like I said, this is yeah, one that's totally for me. You know what I mean? So I just want to preference that because. You like that when I say that, um, because if I don't, if I if I don't do that, people are going to be screaming at me, saying mm-hmm. that you're an idiot. Why would you do Mario Two? Nobody would. It's not gonna Nobody make- should ever say that. You're not an I idiot. Know, but they do. You know, you're a smart guy. Sometimes. Well, if you're doing that, you got to also bring back the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. We could recast it. We have <laughs> a new cartoon. Bring it back on Saturday morning cartoons. That, yes. that, sounds, that would be yeah. incredible. So what's your first game? Good choice. So I'm a, I'm sort of with you. Um, similar. I'm going to go to the Game Boy. I want to bring back Super Mario Land 2, the six golden coins. Okay. This, this might be the game I have logged the most hours into, a game that really doesn't take you long at all. I've played and replayed and replayed <laughs> Super Mario Land 2 over and over and over again. And the reason that I want to go back to this one, this is kind of what I was talking about at the beginning, where you could just blow this thing up. You could make yeah. it the most gorgeous-looking 3DS game. And just the, the idea of kind of like going from world to world and collecting the six different coins, the, like I just had a real addictive personality back then, I guess. So I wouldn't mm-hmm. even... I don't think that I would make this a big thing. Um, I Like a big, huge physical release like kind of like what you were talking about yeah um but i think that you could probably do like a new because it was a different art style in a in and of itself it was yeah. it was totally different from what we were getting on nes it obviously moved away from what we saw with with the first super mario land i would just i this is a totally selfish pick because i played this so much i want to have another six golden coins game on my on my 3ds or whatever it is uh whatever the next handheld would be that game was a lot of fun, and and the reason why because Super Mario Land was so horrendous. Yeah, and like Mario was so tiny, and like yeah. the the question blocks were so small. So when I didn't got, care. So when we got this one, I thought, wow, this is Mario. Like you saw Mario, you could defi- mm-hmm. you could definitively look at that game and go, that's a full scale Mario. That is awesome, and he actually legitimately grew when you got the mushroom and all that stuff. It was a little laggy. Ran like the frame rate was horrible, but the game was a lot of fun. It was a bunch. I don't remember that about that at all. But the what, sound, track, yeah. Well, it just felt like it ran slow. Like it wasn't like a full speed. Like it got better as time went on. Like yeah. in terms of like three and all that, but like it just felt like that game didn't run fast. I mean, like so that was you know I, I'm playing it again on my 3ds now because mm-hmm. it is available on the 3ds. Um, yeah, even just seeing it in color would be great because it had, you could play it in, on Game Boy Color. It had kind of like the, what, maybe three or four colors or whatever yeah, it was. But it was yeah. just so different. Like the way that you ended the levels, there's always the bell at the top. Yeah, yeah, and like yeah. the, uh, you would ring it. And if you did that, you can go down and, and 
do a little game. There's always yep. like the pri- different prizes you could get. I just freaking love this game. I, I like was the, so addicted to it. The, the rabbit ears. Like, yeah, you could get that power up where so you can like, use a rabbit ears to, back to, to that. fly. Yeah, to, even the yeah. way they did the fire flower was kind of different. He had the yeah. thing like he had the little hat or whatever, the yeah, feather the on his hat. Or feather on his hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did a lot I, of stuff with that. I really like this game. Yeah, very different. That, that's a good one. I like that one. I like that one. Thank you. Um, thank you. My next one is Kid Icarus. Uh, the original one on the NES. I love this game. I thought this game was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Just I played it over and over and over again. I just I would go back, you know, and and rebeat it and and all that stuff. What I would do with this one though is I'd probably make it a strictly eShop game, um, and I would just redo the graphics, like mm-hmm. bring it up to snuff. Bring it up to it's her, and when I say that, like I don't mean like new Super Mario type stuff. I would go like sixteen bit, like when they took, yep. you know, when they went from NES to All Stars, they just re they polished it. You know, they made it sixteen bit era. That's what I would do with this one. You know, don't go hog wild. Make it about a thirty get thirty dollar game. You know, twenty mm-hmm. thirty dollar game. I think is perfect for it. It just let people fall in love with it all over again. I love this game. I thought this game was just amazing and, and so good. And I feel like it never really got its fair due. I felt like well, that's it. That's, that's why you bring it back and give it a new yeah. coat of paint. Cause yeah, a lot of people miss it. We've now kind of heard of kid Icarus, but we never really, cause I never played it, yeah. but now if I've played like the, the newer 3ds game, like mm-hmm. the last one that we got, but and that's not a good one. I don't think well, that's, that's a good represent a good mm-hmm. representation of what the game is. You know, when when you played the original NES, you had Mario, Metroid, Zelda, mm-hmm. and then this game. I felt like they were the four pillars to the franchise. And you had Punch Out as well. But I feel like these four were the ones that like these were the games that you had to get when you mm-hmm. owned that console. And I just feel like with with Kid Icarus, it was overlooked by so many people, and it was essentially, you know, to me, it was just as good as Zelda, you know, in terms of, like, mm. the puzzles. And when you would go into the dungeons at the end of the, you know, you'd go World 1-1, one, one, World 1-2, one, 1-3, one, and then 1-4 one, would be a dungeon. So it's kind of like Mario, kind of like Zelda. But when you would go into the dungeons, these dungeons were so good, and they were just... Some were complex, and it took you time, and you had to figure out what you were doing in order to. It was just so good, man. Man, you make me want to go back and play this. Like, uh, uh, you gotta play it, man. If you've never played, have you it, played Ewan Squadron yet? We talked about that last no, night. I still have to play no. Act Razor or whatever. Where do I get it from? That's what I'm I not mean. sure. I, I don't know if it's on the Virtual Console or yeah, not. I gotta look I gotta for check it. that out. It's I a Capcom think, game. Yeah, I had to think about it, but I didn't. Get so it. so good. So, what's your next game? Okay, so I don't know if I'm. Like just coming out and being completely obvious, and and I want to ignore the version that we got on the DS. But with Super Mario sixty four, there's a theme here to my to my pick. I think we continue to go back to Mario. The way that and 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 maybe we like release these at a staggered rate, kind of like what we've seen with a lot of these Zelda games. But I think Super Mario sixty four and and a lot of Mario games in general need to get that same treatment that we've got with Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time on the three DS. A new, but but make it on console instead. Like make it for the Wii U. Even launch an NX with a Super Mario sixty four mm-hmm. NX version, ten eighty p, sixty frames per second, absolutely gorgeous. And um, probably throw in some like sharing features in there as well. Like because there's just so much freedom. You can play that game however the heck you want. Um, you can throw some some speed run stuff in there, some challenges, and different ways to kind of just share that experience with everybody i think super mario 64 this is something you talked about uh super mario 2 not making any money i think you can launch a system with this and be yeah. like that'd be your only um mario game if you go breath of the wild and super mario 64 remake remake you're laughing i think people, that, that would people be yeah people have been screaming for this for a while and especially they because i feel like it's it's such a good game 
but now it's so outdated. The camera is horrendous. Right. So you just you have it now. You have a you have yeah. a controller with two sticks, and you fix the camera thing. My God, that's the best game ever made. Absolutely. I think yeah, you could you could definitely do some damage with that one. I, I, mm-hmm. I'm 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 in agreement with that one. It's almost yeah. too easy. That's an easy answer. Yeah. So my third one, and this is the one that I feel like is the money maker, and I feel like this is the one that should get done. And if if I ran Nintendo, this is the one that I would put on the board. We're doing this one. Super Mario RPG remake. Ah, you took it. And I'm going with. I'm going to bring Square in, and I'm saying, let's go. Let's mm-hmm. do this. Like we want the treatment of what you're doing with. You know, Final Fantasy VII. Dude, will these supply. games are making a huge comeback right yeah. now. Like, there are Japanese role-playing games coming everywhere. And, like, this is in a Mario style? Come on. Yeah. Let's and do I, it. And I would just full-on 3D render it, make it big, make it bold, like, really take it to the next level, put your people on it, put their people on it, and just make it happen. The partnership is there. They're back talking to each other again. They're back being friends again. Now's the time to make it really happen. And I think mm-hmm. this is the one that if we ran Nintendo, this is the one that for me personally, mm-hmm. I'm going, this has to get made. This is the one that I'm remaking and I'm doing and I'm going big. I'm going bold and I'm going, you know, like I said, we're going Final Fantasy style where it's going to be fully. And I, but except for the differences is you get the whole game at once. None of this mm-hmm. breaking out stuff. <laughs> like you get it all at once. We're going to fund it. Let's go and make it happen. And, I think there's, it's a no-brainer, honestly. I completely agree. That would just be so nice to see because it's just a, such a different game. Like you didn't, nobody ever really saw this one coming. The fact that Mario was in such a, like because now we, we're kind of used to the whole like Paper Mario thing, to and it's sort of like RPG light in a way mm-hmm. to have kind of that. And even Super Mario RPG wasn't really like a it wasn't overly heavy. It wasn't a bloated RPG game. But just that it just seemed more dedicated. I mean, maybe it's just all in the all in the name. But Possibly. I think that's great. I think that would be that would be great. I had a backup in mm-hmm. case you said Mario RPG. Um, along the same lines as Super Mario Two, I would love a remake of Super Mario World, um, mainly because we've seen what happened with All Stars and just kind of having that f- it looking fresh and and packaged up really nicely with all the other games. Super Mario World again. One of the best launch games of all time, either mm-hmm. this one or Super Mario 64. You could, and I'm not even going 3D. I think still stick with uh, the 2D, keep mm-hmm. all of the mechanics all the same, just 1080p, looking really great. That's yeah. that was good. That was my backup. I don't really have much more to say about it than that because okay. it was like my my fourth. Like if if you have, but I think ultimately I think we we're both in agreement. Mario. RPG is the, the one to go with. Well, and to, to really like hammer down uh, Gary's point, and the reason he brought this up, like I think the major opportunity in the remakes is in Mario. Yeah. I think like you make it work there first. Maybe you go to other franchises and other IPs. I mean, they've been doing it with Zelda for so long. Yeah. Well, those and, are the powerful ones. Yeah. And, and like Wind Waker was a phenomenal remake. Like they, mm-hmm. they tweaked it, they fixed it. Twilight Princess. It's funny, man. I love that game when I played it the first time. I can't get through this a second time. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why what it is. It's a long game. Zelda games in in a whole are typically long games as it is. Mm-hmm. So the only one that I've ever gone back numerous times and beaten is A Link to the Past. Yeah. And other than that, like I find it very difficult to go back and beat games over and over. Zelda games, because they're just so long. Mm-hmm. Um, I was well, going to say a link to the past as well, but uh, I I just played a link between worlds. I feel like that's I, actually better. Yeah, well, they, not a better game, but it's a better than getting a remake kind of thing. Well, we and they were going to. That was the whole idea behind it. They yeah. were initially making a remake for a link to the past, and then when they got going through, they were like, "Why? Why don't we just do a, you know a sequel kind?" Such of, a good game. A sequel. It's a good game. It really is. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I I I loved that game, and I played it over and over again. I felt like you can't, and that's why they bring up any Zelda games because we get yep. them all the time. Yep. We're constantly getting Zelda updates. So, and the one that doesn't get ever done is Mario. Like, you know, it was like we got that initial Super Mario All Stars, and it was like, oh, this is amazing. This is the best. And then they've never gone back to that. Mm-hmm. And 
That's I've always strange. Kind of, yeah, I've always kind of thought like, man, we get new Superman. Like when we got new Super Mario's, I was like, man, they're gonna bring All Stars. When they did that All Star for the Mario edition um, of the Wii, I thought, oh my god, they oh, yeah. the graphics. And then they didn't do the gra- It was just the same game. They just repackaged mm-hmm. and put it on the disc. And I was like, kind of disappointed with that. Um, but you know, it is what it is. You know? Yeah, yeah. I got that collector's edition still in the in the case. That would drive you nuts. I haven't played it yet. I did play. I still have it. I have it all boxed and everything. I still have it, but I did open it up. Yeah. I opened it because I was like, I got to play this again. So yeah, okay. You buy it again digital. Like you do everything. Well, this is before there was digital, really. On the way. Yeah, no. I, you, bought a, you bought that version. I'm you being version silly. Just, no, but you, you bought the version that just came out, right? No, I bought the Wii version. Okay, okay. But the collector's edition for the Wii. Gotcha. Yeah. Um... Okay, so topic number two. Uh, this comes from Billy Blaze, and he says, "How would you bring Pokemon into the next generation, especially if we were to assume a connection between the home console and the handheld? Where would we go with this? What would we do?" Um, I got quite a few ideas, actually. Okay, um, and it's actually not quite. It's one gigantic idea that all comes together and meshes everything so for me personally i would utilize multiple pillars here i would Mm -hmm. utilize pokemon go i would utilize amiibo cards and amiibo and i would utilize the handheld and the home console i would bring it all around together to be this ultimate game per se so what I would do is the Pokemon the, the the Pokemon that we're catching right now in Pokemon Go, those you would you would have, you would collect, you would hold on to. Then you could go out and you could buy Pokemon cards that are amiibo cards mm-hmm. that you could then scan into either some type of Pokedex or something like that, um, either via your NX or you could do it with the I would make it available for Android phones. I don't think Apple phones allow full access to the NFC reader. Yeah, I know that Android phones do and they can people can just utilize them and do what they want to do and go crazy. So I would open it up to Android users and let them scan those cards into the phones as well. Then I would go and create a classic typical Pokemon game RPG style where you just go out and you collect, you know, maybe sun and moon, whatever it is. Then the final part part is I would create a Pokemon stadium type game for the home where now this is where it all comes together. And the Pokemon that you collect in Pokemon go the amiibo cards or the amiibo figurines along with the, the Pokemon handheld RPG type thing. You can bring the ones that you collect all in, And you can battle your friends and play against your friends. And I would just make it like a, you could set up tournaments online Mm -hmm. with your friends and you can all go and try to battle each other. Maybe like little adventures with your friends where you have to, like I would have a solo campaign where you have to go through different tournaments and gyms around the world and take over the world and all that stuff. Like to become the ultimate gym leader um, or ultimate Pokemon trainer. And then, but I feel like that would be how I would handle it because you have such a sensation right now with Pokemon Go, mm-hmm. and you have this <laughs> crazy thing with Amiibo that you could actually get the Amiibo back on fire and going again. Um, I would do figurines for all the starters, and I would do cards for the rest of the the, the Amiibo, um, and then as far as like, then you have the new game that would be. I'd make it where you can How either many play. Starters are you thinking? You're talking about what are there? Like, is well, there there's three, three starters. There's three. No, no, no. There's three starters per. When I say that, okay, let me let me clarify this. So when you played uh, Red and Blue, the original ones, mm-hmm. there's three starters, right? So those three starters would get amiibo. Then right, black and white. Those three starters. Oh, I see what okay. you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All okay. the I'm starters. Like, we got to make more than three Amiibo yeah, no, no. here. Okay, all, I got no, you. No, but that's figurines. So all yeah, yeah, the yeah, starters, yeah. All, and I would probably do legendaries too. So there all the starters yep. plus the legendaries would get figurines 
then all their other ones will just get cards. Oh my gosh! And go that way. This way, it jumps, money. oh dude, it, it jump starts the amiibo again. Mm -hmm. Gets them, gets people going crazy for them, and you have the cards because people love the cards, and I think it takes the cards to a new level, mm -hmm. and then you pull it all together, and that's the way. That's my personal way I would handle it. Yeah, and I honestly I think after you see how well those amiibo sell, like the actual figurines, you start releasing like very like Marth kind of like limited quantities of whatever, like yeah, po just some random Pokemon, Snorlax like I, I, or whatever. Yeah, just little. Sure, yeah, yeah, man. Like you just go down the line. Like, yep, this it's only available for like this month. Maybe it's like yeah. you do kind of like a monthly thing, because mm -hmm. because. I think what we're we're not really addressing here, but I think we're both thinking is if there's just so many, like the manufacturing of all of these things is is so difficult to get the the quantities right to it of the number of of uh, figures to produce. So, gotta have smarter ways to get around that. So I love that. I agree with absolutely everything. That sounds okay. absolutely perfect. I wanted to add a couple things, a couple thoughts <laughs> that I had. Um, maybe because. We haven't seen Pokemon in the traditional sense on a on a console. Never, so never been on a console. Part of me is thinking like how, like what is the reason that it's been on a handheld? A lot of it is you you want to have a lot of the community. You want like you want to have like your your friends and you're all playing together. Like oh my god, I got this guy and all the like, the link up and the trading and everything. So mm -hmm. I started to think about how do we like bring people in if we're forcing them to play this on a console at home. And so the first thing that comes to mind is four player split screen. I think that they, like for we've never seen an RPG have that type of way to play. So you have everybody can just either maybe it's an intermingled world, and that's probably if what you're getting at as well is like when you play online, you might be kind of sharing kind of like a like a World of Warcraft kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. if you kind of mix World of Warcraft with Pokemon, that's kind of what what I'm yeah. thinking. But you also allow people like an MMO. to an, 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 an MMO. Yeah, yeah, or a momo, I think, as the kids say. I think yeah. that's what they call uh, it. Momo? I say that's, MMO. No, they totally don't. I'm being yeah, old. No, you're, you're being old. Uh, they're, not all, they're not all amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Four players split screen. Imagine just having all of your buddies over and you just like, I would actually do that. I would really like to like have people over and play Pokemon. I think that would be, I'd play with my parents. Um, so that was that was one idea that I had. Another one, I love. I think I'm just going to start stealing ideas from other Nintendo things here too. Splatfest, I would love to have some sort of, whether it's weekly, bi-weekly, or once a month type of event where, I don't know, like you you could have certain Pokemon that, that are super rare to find, or maybe you have like, even like you said, like you can set up these tournaments and pick a side or pick a team, Team Mystic or whatever these things are, are called. I'm on Blue Team. That's all I even know about. Mm -hmm. Pokemon Go. But yeah, you could have these different kind of like weekly or bi-weekly um, big events. And then the last thing that I want to do is throw in the idea of seasons that we see in Animal Crossing oh, and have that sort of like affect the world. Again, you're sort of inhabiting this world together. And I think that if it's maybe certain Pokemon are available in the spring and the summer where others are available. Oh, that'd be so, kind of cool. The that'd be so cool. Yeah. Or like, or like how with, with animal crossing. And I know there's probably people are like, oh, I don't want it to be like animal crossing. But the one thing I like oh, about man. animal crossing is you have some are available in day, some are available at night, right? Some are available when it's raining, mm -hmm. some are available when it's snowing. So that would be a nice aspect to have in there to go like, Hey, from, because, and it doesn't feel forced. Like, that actually makes no. sense. I mean, like, when – when I know for a fact that, like, when a new Animal Crossing game comes out, Tony and I will go. We'll buy a strategy guide mm -hmm. so we can look through it and go, okay, it's 4 o'clock Saturday afternoon. It's raining. These fish are available. Let's yep. go get them. And, and that's what we do. So it'd be similar to that, like, where mm -hmm. it's like, hey, it's 4 o'clock on a Saturday. Oh, my God, it's raining too. Guess what? This legendary is typically out at this time. Let's go look for it, you know, and, and exactly. I think you, would, you think you could have a lot. And then when you get like a bunch of players going out and playing together and I, I, I like the idea. I do. I think, it, I mean, it, yeah, it, it makes sense in my mind. And, and even you could even go as far as to say certain areas are only available. Like certain areas in the world are, are only available in like in the wintertime. Maybe there's a river that you can't cross, but it freezes over and you could kind nice. of like 
run across the ice or whatever, like things yeah. like that. Or maybe there's something that is frozen. And it's like a wall of ice that melts when in the springtime. So you can, you can do that a little later. Like, I think that there's just so many Pokemon is already a surprisingly deep game. It looks simple, but it, it has so much there. Yes. And I think if, when you take it to a console, you actually, I think you probably have to add a couple more layers, even on top of that, just to, I don't know if it's justifying it being mm -hmm. on a console, but it has to be like, to me, it just has to feel a little beefier. And I, not only that, but it has to justify you not playing it on the, on the, the way that you've always played it, which is a, a handheld, like the convenience of the handheld is it has to have something else. And again, I think world of Warcraft slash Pokemon, that's, yeah. that's the way to do it. I'm with you. I'm with you there. That'd be, That'd be good. So every now and then, like when we talk about some of these things, like I, I actually in my mind I created that and like that was real and I couldn't wait to go I, buy it. And it's I just know, so it's sad. Not even it's there. Like, I know that's not gonna happen. Like with sometimes, the Super Nintendo Classic we did last yeah. week. Like, sometimes, oh. yeah, I, I do. I sit, I sit there and I think like, oh, that was so awesome. I can't wait till Nintendo puts out. I'm like, I don't run. It's not gonna that. happen. <laughs> I, I don't have this power, man. I wish I did, but oh. you know, it is what it is. You're only playing so, with a little power. A little bit, a little bit. So that is all. Aww. Thank you guys for listening to us on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play, wherever else you do. It means so much. Watching us on YouTube. Um, I was just talking to Sean beforehand. Like the support is overwhelming. Like I, we don't deserve it. It's we're just humbled by the, the way you guys are just supporting us and it means the world to us. So thank you all. Seriously. It means the world to us. Um, follow me, Instagram, Twitter at Nintendo gurus. I'm going to get this right this time. Follow Sean at Sean, like Connery Capri, like the pants. You got to say the full thing first at Sean Connery. That's Sean, like Connery Capri, like the pants. It rolls right off the tongue okay. and it gets totally locked in your brain. Okay. You get it next time. I get it. I get it. So, uh, and you can check out his podcasts. He's got quite a few. He's got Weedy Gamer Cast, which is a great show. Check it out. Fiona. Special Fiona. edition. Okay, you're going to talk about Fiona. So, She's awesome. She Fiona was last week. She was awesome last week. I went through. She actually, I have to contact her. She said something. I was like, it, it just clicked. And I was like, why am I not watching this? But she was talking about, like, J vloggers, which is Japanese vloggers. Mm-hmm. I love Japanese culture, and I'm like, oh, my God, I got to, like, find out who she's watching so I can go watch this stuff. So that really got me excited. So shout out to Fiona. And Fiona's the best. Yeah, she's awesome. And special, so, I don't know, when when does this come out? Wednesday? This is going to come out, uh, the audio will be Wednesday, the, the video will be Thursday. Okay, so a couple days ago when you're listening to this, go back, Josh Stapleton Oh, my guest on We the Gamer Cast this week. Oh. That dude is the best. If you're listening right now, I, man, I'm so happy that I finally got a chance to quote unquote meet you. I, we could have gone on, that, that could have been a six hour episode. Oh, man, like, I cannot wait. Oh, and I forgot to record your thing. He made me these I'm sweet, so I don't know if I've shown you guys these. He made me these sweet coasters. I got a link uh, between worlds. I've got the, my favorite one that I'm using is my Super Mario Kart. Like these things are hand made. Yeah. They're absolutely incredible. So yet another shout out to he, Josh. He's just he just made, he made me a set as well. So yes, thank you, Josh. That was awesome. And I apologize because I was supposed to record something for you, an audio clip, and I completely forgot. Don't worry I, about it. I am so sorry. Do you still need it? I do, but I was also thinking like maybe because I know you're trying to wrap this up. We should do like a like a, a, a kind of an ad at the beat for this show. Okay. At the beginning of We the Gamer Cast, we should do something. There you something, go. That's something. a good idea. I like that. I like that. So that's all. Peace, Peace out. out. Cub Scout. I was thinking, like, I had so many stupid endings, man. I got to, like, I got to have a list. I had to have, like, a, a notes on the side of my computer. I go, okay, you're doing If We Ran Nintendo. Peace out, Cub Scout. That's your, that's your This is where I ruin it for you and go, bye. <laughs> <laughs> that's totally. <laughs>
But that's what me and Miguel did today. We put that all up. And then I was like, dude, what do I do about my three statues? And he's like, ah, we're going back for it, back for it. I was like, I got a coffee table. I can just put the three on the coffee table. Dude, it's so good. Yeah, they, they look good. You should have it so like a uh, motion detector like go, sets off the Wonder Woman's song every time you uh, walk by. Yeah. That song. <laughs> I love that song. <laughs>